Right. Hmm. That's interesting. I never, I was, you know, I was um, familiar with like, you know, when it comes to things like running water and uh, things of that nature, but the mineral one, that's, that was, that's a new one to me. That's interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. No, I, I, how long have you been investigating, Rochelle? Um, so I've been investigating for going, oh. I guess, 11 oh. years. I started investigating when I was like 20, and I'm going to be 32 this year. So maybe going on 12 years. Um, yeah, I can't believe I've actually been doing it that <laughs> long, to be honest. <laughs> Uh, time flies, literally. Like, like just was like yesterday. I was doing commentary at actual indie wrestling events. So, wow, that's awesome. Yeah, I was just talking to someone earlier about how fast like time just gets away, especially when you get it takes off just with life. But then I can only imagine when you you do have behind a, a passion or something that um that you, you know, you're pursuing and that you're, you know, you're into. And then, you know, you just look up and you're like, man, I've been doing, yeah. <laughs> what happened? Like, oh, I was just, so I can definitely see it. I was actually talking to the team yesterday and Grant had mentioned that we've been doing it. We've been a team for a year. And when he said, like, I guess, I knew that, but it just doesn't feel like we've been a team for a year. Like, it feels like we've known each other forever, but to think that we've been like going and investigating as a ghost hunter for a year um, for the show, like, that, it didn't seem like it's been that long. Especially the fact that you guys are already on season two. I know, right? Like, that yeah, that's, happen. yeah, that's crazy. Like, that's, I like it, though. I, I love it because, you know, like, there's there's a big pocket of people who they do believe, we believe, we know. I don't, I don't even like to believe. Like, we know. Like, and <clears throat> there's, like, this gap, and you get, you get fill-ins, and you get, you know, your little fillers and so on and so forth, but I've always liked um, Ghost Hunters because, like, it's it's like-minded people who are actually getting out there and, you know, trying to see like, is this just an odd set of circumstances or is this, is there something here giving answers to people like you guys, you provide a, to me, a valuable service, you know what I mean? Cause sometimes people just want to know and that's, that can ease a lot of people, you know, it's just to know, yeah. you know? Thank you. And I mean, that's the whole goal is we're trying, trying to help people out obviously we want to further the paranormal field and figure out what needs to happen to have a full body apparition and like what different environmental changes and everything that go into having a paranormal experience but at the end of the day the goal is to help our client make them feel comfortable let them know like yes you have paranormal activity or you don't and either way like give them some type of peace of mind so they can be mm -hmm. comfortable with whatever we find out right and the the good thing about helping people it's not just about you know uh, finding evidence it's also about like you said helping the people understand and and not just understanding but helping them get through it for the future pun intended for future of ghost hunting exactly. <laughs> as a cheap plug Right. I also feel like people are, and I mean, I'm a very compassionate and very like loving type person, but I'm also very sometimes a little blunt and like, you know, we as a people, we're not, you know, we don't pick up what others are putting down, you know, Amityville Horror, for example, get out. All right, I'm out. I'm leaving. But most people, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, you know, they stick around to find out why, you know, and it's like, okay, so you guys help come in and be like, okay, listen, um, you might want to pick up on the signs and go ahead and, uh, or, you know, oh, you're good, you, you know, yeah. so, yeah. but, um, what was your first, like, experience, like, what kind of woke you up and made you say, like, okay, what, what is this, what's going on? 
So I had my first paranormal experience when I was eight years old. Um, I woke up in the middle of the night to someone standing at the foot of my bed. Uh, The next morning I told my mom. She didn't really believe me. So that was kind of disheartening. And then the following night, my sister woke up to the same person standing at the foot of her bed. And she didn't know anything about my experience the night before. I had told my mom and my sister wasn't around. But when my sister told my mom, I was standing right there. And I told her, I was like, I saw that person too last night. And that kind of intrigued, like, intrigued me and made me want to little, find out a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you're eight, you're a little limited by what your parents will allow you to do. So, um, you know, I can't just go ghost hunting and everything if my mom doesn't want me to. Um, so when I got older, at 20, me and my sister started going on investigations, hobbies, um, different ghost events, and investigating. And then eventually she joined Riverbend Paranormal, which is the team that Brian founded. And... Um, she was like, hey, I'm about to, I'm going to try to join this paranormal group. Do you want to join? And I told her, I was like, no, you go ahead. And if it's not a cult, then maybe. But other than that, like, it's not a cult. we'll see. Um, she went, she told me how amazing all of them were. So I went on a couple investigations with them and then um, eventually ended up joining the funny thing about it is Brian told me, he's like, when my, your sister first told me that she wanted to bring you along. I told her no, that we hadn't. I was like, so you did not want me on your team. And he's like, I didn't need you on my team. (laughs) He's like, I had enough people. And your sister was awesome. And he's like, so I was kind of like, I don't need anybody out there. He's like, but she was really persistent. And I said, well, it's a good thing she was persistent because we're best friends now, you dummy. (laughs) (laughs) He definitely speaks very highly of you. So, yeah, Yeah, definitely definitely does. So, Like, we always laugh because I'm like, yeah, we're best friends. But in the beginning, you didn't even want me around. Like, how about that? (laughs) And he's like, I know, I know. But, yeah. So, that's – and then somehow me and him got on Ghost Hunters. It all happened so fast. And I'm grateful for it. Right. Yeah. That's definitely – I can only imagine, like, just the experience and the the information, the – <clears throat> the learning, the, you know, and just the, heck, even the sense of the camaraderie, you know, of having a crew of people, you know, who, again, like-minded, you know, similar pursuits, similar passions, similar drive and learning and growing together and exploring and getting answers. Like, I think that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's one of the dreams yeah. for, I think, most yeah. people. Yeah, it's definitely been an awesome experience. I I actually told uh, Brian um, just a couple just weeks ago. I was like, it's on my bucket list. I have to go paranormal investigating with Brian and Rochelle one time. All right. I, I yeah, my, we can make that happen. Yes, yeah, that's, that's what Brian said. My nephew, he's ready. He was like, after the interview with Brian, my nephew was like, so when are we? What? How far away is it? Like he was ready to gas up. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> <laughs> like, yes, you guys can come to Alton. Old we'll paranormal investigate here. I'm down, so down. You know, like it'll be a good time for sure. Oh yeah. You guys I'm are kinda... so close to each other, and I'm just over here in West Virginia. Yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> a couple more hours, Logan. It's just a couple more hours. I threaten Logan all the time, like and it's like you're just a couple hours away. It's like I will drive down there. Like yeah. <laughs> uh, by God, West Virginia. And come down there and all the jokes my- I hear. <laughs> but uh, speaking of Brian, you, you know that qu- this question was gonna come out at some time or so, so I gotta get it out. You know it. Brian's okay. fallen season one. All right. Uh, it was probably one of the funniest moments uh, I had to laugh. On I, I told Brian I was sorry, but oh my gosh, that was. Well, you seen my reaction. Yes, like, I did. It went off for like 10 minutes. I couldn't get it together. Like I, at first I was trying to be, so let me just, let me just tell you. Okay. Brian is my best friend. We spend a lot of time together. 
he is clumsy. I love him to death, but he is. He's like a bull in a china shop. He runs into things. He hurts himself. He has specific noises that come out of him when he hurts himself. And because I'm around him so often, I know what noise goes with what he's hurt. Does that make sense? That makes a lot of sense. When he fell down the stairs, I didn't see him fall. Like, because I was still in the room a little bit. I didn't see him fall. I just heard it. But I didn't hear any noise come out of him. So I was scared. Like, initially, I was scared because I was like, oh, shit. Like, he's actually, he hurt himself. And I peek out there. And I'm trying to keep it together. And I'm like, Brian, are you okay? And all I hear him go is, yeah. That's when I start losing it because he looked like a dried up bug on the ground. (laughs) And he did mention it was really dark in that location. It was so dark. It was like pitch black. We were in the middle of the field. And like there aren't street lights out there or anything. And we're in this old slave shack that doesn't have lights or anything. And so it's hard to see, but it was so, it was so bad because every like bad and funny way, because every question I asked him, his response only made me laugh harder and I couldn't get it together. Like, I'm like, are you okay? Does it matter? Do you want me to help? No, I want you to stay laughing at me. I'm like, I'm trying to be a good friend, but every single time you respond to me, I just... I was crying, cracking up so hard. Like, I could barely stand up because it was a full body laugh. It was, I feel bad, but it was one of my non-paranormal favorite moments. <laughs> I still watch the video. I have it on my phone. Like, anytime I'm feeling like I need a good laugh, like, I watch it. And our cameraman was laughing. He was trying not to, but as soon as I lost it, he lost it, like... <laughs> And then I lost it while watching it on TV, you know. Yeah. We were like, and my sister was talking to me. She's like, Rochelle, that wasn't like a, like a nice lady laugh. She's like, it was a cackle. I was like, I know, but it was so real. I couldn't like, I'm not going to change the way I laugh. I I cackle like a witch. I can't help it. But that (laughs) makes Brian laugh when I laugh that hard. So it was a funny experience and he did hurt his ankle but he was okay like he got up and he was walking I made him ice it even though he didn't want to and like chill out I made him sit down in a chair we were trying to pack up all the equipment and he was like trying to get up to help and I was like can you just sit there like you broke yourself just sit there please (laughs) the stubbornness of Brian yeah, and I've only spoke to him on the on, on here one time, and I I feel like I already know him. Yeah, he's a great person for sure. But there was also another fall that wasn't no laughing matter in season two premiere. Oh. Yeah, I was just getting ready to ask about two things really about that um, part one of Terror Town. Okay, it was like at first when when Kristen fell. I, at first I was like, oh man, she just tripped. But then when it kept replaying and like what you were saying, like she kind of did fly. Like it was, that was very, I was just like, I'm watching it. I'm watching it. I'm just like, man, I don't, whoa, like that, you know what I mean? Cause I mean, I've seen a thousand people, you know, trip down some stairs. You know, I watch ridiculous all the time, you know, so but like, yeah, that definitely was, and what me, made me even more like something. And I wanted to ask you this. Okay. Before that, when you guys had the uh, crap, the um, generates energy. The what is that? The Vandegraaff. Yes, the Vandegraaff. Yeah. Okay. okay. When she was like, um, "You want to turn that off?" Uh huh. Like obviously. The history of this whole town and everything, I, I get it. But when you, like, I, you know, I've seen a lot, but and I've, I've watched quite a few, you know what I'm saying, of the shows. But the look on your face, like, I was like, she is shook right now. And then when you went to turn it off, like, yeah. it was almost like, it seemed to me like, like something had you so shook, it seemed like you were even trying to, from a distance, 
turn the Van de Graaff off. I will say the thing about the Van de Graaff is so it produces electricity. If you don't touch, like if you touch it the wrong way, it'll shock the shit out of you. Okay, okay. So that's why I was hesitant because I'm like, it's been going off and then all of a sudden it stopped producing yeah. spark. So something's taking the energy or at least I, it possibly is taking the energy. So when I was walking up to it, I was like, this has been going on. Like this machine's been on for a while. I don't know how charged up it is. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to turn it off and just hope like I don't get shocked because okay, that that makes, one. Yeah. Two. I was yeah. thinking like I was thinking I'm like okay it hadn't been going off so if something was sucking up all the energy and I'm looking at I'm watching you go in to turn it off and I'm like and I'm thinking like is she feeling like man like. What if whatever is just like right here sucking up all this energy? You know what I mean? And I thought yeah. like that was the apprehension, but I totally get like you said, like it's just charging up, charging, you know. And it's like, yeah, so that makes sense. Um, I actually wasn't honest to God, wasn't worried about someone in there. Um, we had seen so the the evidence that Brandon and Brian captured on the EMCCD camera. Kristen and I also had it on that camera. So we experienced it. Like we knew that it was coming from that room and going to the next room and it was coming through that pathway, like whatever that was. So we already knew that possibly someone was in there, but I wasn't scared because the way it moved looked so, it was beautiful when I was standing there watching it. Um, But the thing about it was, we went in there with the thermal because we were like, obviously it has some type of heat. So maybe we can pe- pick up a heat signature in here. So we were letting that machine go and we were walking around all the rooms and checking for a heat signature. Then we would turn it off and walk around all the rooms and check for a heat signature. Um, the thing about it is you see only like five minutes of our investigation and every run we do is at least an hour, if not more. And they cut right. it down. So, um, I don't know where I was going with that. Like, I was going somewhere, and then I forgot. <laughs> I don't know, man. Um, getting ready to leave. Like, we had charged that whole room, and, like, we were getting ready to leave, and Kristen said, well, I'm disappointed. And then something got... The screw. Like, it got thrown at us. Yeah. Neither one of us were close to anything. Our cameraman wasn't close to anything. We had him replay it so we could see where we were at in the room. Um, And then we searched everywhere. And Kristen's like, it's a nail. I'm like, no, it's a screw. And there's a big difference between a nail and a screw. Like, a nail can fall out of the wall. A screw doesn't just fall out of the wall without having plaster or drywall around it. So that something that I had picked up on was like, when that screw got thrown, she had said she was disappointed because nothing had really happened. Um, when we were in the cemetery, I was, I'll flat out say, it, I was talking a little bit of shit. Like, <laughs> and, okay, like, I was. And I was like, well, if something runs up on us, blah, 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 we'll be, able, we'll be able to outrun a baby or whatever. Which, then I felt like something, I heard someone run up on me. Man. And, like, I I don't know it I it startled me because I was like oh crap because that was after we had done like after we had had the fall down the stairs mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when we had had the fall down the stairs we had just got done hearing a bunch of different stuff in that room um, when we were upstairs we were hearing stuff downstairs and when we were downstairs we were hearing stuff upstairs and we finally said okay you're not wanting to talk to us we're going to be back later and you need to decide if you want to talk to us or not. Because we're out. And when we were heading down the stairs, then that happened. And I started thinking, like, any time that we would suggest that we didn't believe that something was going on or say we were disappointed or that they needed to do something, they did something. So right. it's almost like they were proving a point. Yeah, proving and, a point. And it was, like, intelligent. Yeah. And then when Kristen fell down the st- stairs, like, that was absolutely terrifying. I still can't. Like, unlike the footage with Brian, I can't watch that footage. Like, it is hard for me because 
I was already down at the end of, like, I was already at on the first floor. And I turned around because I was asking her something. And all I seen was her coming forward. And she had missed all those stairs. Like, she went from that landing to the floor. And that floor was concrete. And she went face first. Yeah, like, she was airborne. She was, that, yeah. That yeah. was a scary moment. And, and I know that that is a scary moment because uh, a couple months ago, my mom actually had a really bad fall going to pick up my little brother at work late at night at midnight and she had a really bad fall and it you know it when you when you witness that you know it's like your your heart comes out of your chest yeah it it was terrifying like i was also scared to look at her because i was like she hit her face mm -hmm. but she she didn't hit her face surprisingly she was okay like i didn't know how she was sh shaken up she did have paint marks on her um shins and like from where like she i guess hit like the last stair i don't know but um surprisingly she caught herself she didn't hit her face and she was walking but i went up and down the stairs a few times to try to see like if the stairs were off or anything like that and i was like they feel like the way stairs are supposed to feel no step feels like it's higher than the other i ran ran my shoe across the edge to see if there was like a lip that she could have caught herself on and I couldn't feel anything. And like, I did ask her if she felt like she had been pushed after she said, like, listen, like, I don't know if I tripped or if I was pushed or anything. That's why I was like, do you feel like you were pushed? Because based off what I saw, like her back arched and her arms went out. That's like, exactly. and that I feel like goes with someone being pushed because like when you trip I feel like your arms go forward Down. Yeah. And, catch your and it wasn't and it wasn't just uh you got you personally you know checking the steps you guys also used that um to see if it was uh the leveled yeah so, we had brian brian and brandon went in there and checked and every single stair was perfectly level yeah, so right on, it was right on the dot zero and it was just mm -hmm. like wow like and that's it was evidence great... that it just, it shocks you more mm -hmm. and more. And I know that a bunch of people online have said things about her shoes. I'm going to let you guys know right now, Kristen wears those shoes all the time. And she is, like, I've never seen her trip, stumble in them at all. She's extremely graceful. She can run in them. Like, she wears those shoes all the time. They're, like, t practically tennis shoes to her. Yeah, to see not... something like that happen and coming yeah. from her was completely shocking to me like it's it was definitely good. a scary experience but luckily she was okay because I was I, I did say like I made her laugh because I said thank god I was in front of you this time I said otherwise people are going to start thinking that I'm pushing the people <laughs> I'm <laughs> down the stairs I'm like yeah a bad name I, I was going to ask you that I was like uh, it, it's like you're always there with them I know I'm just waiting for me. I'm just waiting for me to fall down the stairs. Oh, don't no, start. No, 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 no. Don't jinx yourself. I know, right? Knock on wood. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, it would have been awesome if you would have been able to catch one of them. I know, right? Uh, yeah, especially. Uh, I, I don't think you could have caught Brian because that was just. Yeah. Yeah. I think that he would just taken me down with him. And then you would have heard multiple noises with him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, that's his elbow. That's his elbow. I know that noise. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I yeah. think a knee, too. I think there was a knee sound in there. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, what do you, uh, like, what do you find, like, okay, kind of like almost two partish, but, like, what do you find are the best methods on an investigation and, like, what are your favorite methods of uh, investigation like? Um, so I think, I feel like a lot of the time when I go in to investigate, you can get some really good EVPs or things happening when you're not necessarily doing an EVP session, when you're not ask, asking questions. Mm -hmm. Like if you're talking about the history or you're just talking in general about the location with someone. Um, a lot of the time, if you're talking to your partner you're investigating with, but not directly asking questions to whoever's there, 
they feel the need to chime in. Um, and I kind of like put it as if someone came up to you and was like, what's your name? How old are you? Where are you? Like, you feel like you're getting interrogated, right? Mm-hmm. You're like, whoa. Right. But if someone's having a conversation and you know something about it, you chime in. You feel more oh, comfortable doing like, that, right? Yep. Except she doesn't know. <laughs> but yeah, so, yeah. Exactly. I feel like I like that method is like, don't necessarily put all the focus on the entity because sometimes that can be overwhelming. Especially uh, going into uh, like a town that you're nobody else has ever investigated. You know, it's new oh. to them to have you guys coming in and investigating that that location. Yeah. Also, like when you go into places that haven't been investigated before, or you're bringing in equipment, we always like to make sure that we explain what the equipment is and what it does. And let them know that it can't hurt them. So then they know how to use it. Mm-hmm. Um, that typically helps. Like if you let some. Because a lot of this stuff is like new technology that you've never seen before. And it could be intimidating. And if you just give them a heads up of like this is what this does. It's not going to hurt you. And this is how you work it. You get good results with that as well. I will say that my favorite like piece of equipment or I love the binaural microphone. I love audio so much. Um, visual stuff is awesome. And it's really cool when you capture it. But audio, I feel like, sometimes tells more of a story. Like, you get more answers from audio sometimes, I feel like. Exactly. Yeah. And I, and I feel like, me personally, like, I just feel like, like I, to me... Like, yes, visuals are they're spectacular, they're great, you know, but then, like, a lot of times, especially for the sake of, like, capturing a visual for someone to be like, see, check this out, you know, there's so much skepticism with visuals. Oh, we, there's so many apps and so many things that, oh, they did this too, they did this, they did this. And even though there are the similar with audio, but mm-hmm. it's less much, you know, and it's just more, mm-hmm. like, if I'm sitting here and then all of a sudden, like, there's this, just this voice, this disassociated, just like, you know, voice or noise. And, and it's just, yeah, I agree. It's just like, to me, those are even more chilling. Like, yeah. Uh, what? <laughs> you know, but like, yeah. So I was, I, yeah. when, sorry, when we investigate or whatnot, um, if I see things, it doesn't startle me as much as if I hear things uh, and not like little noises or, but like big noises, like uh, loud bangs or like hearing a voice. That's a little bit more in your face to me. Like when I see something, I, I think my brain tries to make sense of it too much where it's mm-hmm. go with it's paranormal. It's like, well, is it the shadow is, am I casting the shadow? Like, are my eyes playing tricks on me? I've been walking around in the dark. Did I just, you know what I mean? Like, so when yes. I, when we're investigating, I don't always react to it because I'm still trying to comprehend, am I seeing something or is my mind playing tricks? Are my eyes playing tricks on me? Yeah. And then right. for example, like the, uh, you hearing them run up, running up behind you. Yeah. You like right on, right after that happened, it was like, she knew. Yeah. She heard it. You know, the last of us, because I would have been turned around swinging. Like. <laughs> but like, I was laughing because I was like, I need to quit talking shit because you aren't having it. And I get it. I get it. Like, I'm in your territory and I was making a joke and it, I apologize. Like, my bad. Like, don't run up on me. And the thing that I was t- like, Kristen, everyone always laughs because, yes, I'm a paranormal investigator. I don't like cemeteries. Like they're, I don't, I don't want to walk around in them. I've seen Night of the Living Dead. I know it's a movie, <laughs> but like, I don't want to walk around in them. And I'm like, and I'm like, it's pitch black, and we're walking around, and we have the thermal, and there's graves all around us. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, I see something come out of the ground. Kristen, I'm leaving you. Like I love you. <laughs> I'm gonna run you, okay? Like I'm gonna yeah. outrun one of you. I don't know who it is, but someone. 
But, uh, <laughs> if I if I see the hand signature, uh, if I see a hand, just the heat signature on the, on one of them graves, I'm I'm off. Go on. Exactly. And I know that that's not great. Like I know that I need to work on that as a paranormal investigator. But when we when I heard those people, when I heard someone run up on me, I was like, this is it. Jesus, take me home. Like, I got good at this time. Uh, I'm going to get tackled I, like a football player. <laughs> yeah, I turned around and see anything. I was like, we had been out there already. We had been out there for like a half an hour. It was freezing cold. We had scanned. We had done an EVP session and like, like it was pretty quiet. So we were like, okay, let's head back. And at, And it was a walk. Like we walked probably like a mile into the cemetery. It was a big cemetery, scanning everything. And uh, we ha- it was a trek back up the hill, the mountain, to get back to the car to drive back into town. And when I heard that, I was like, good thing we were already on our way out because <laughs> I, if that would have happened in the beginning, I don't know. Kristen, you'd be doing that on your own. You'd be doing your own EVP session. <laughs> I'll hang out in the car and I'll... I'll flash the lights down there for you. <laughs> you flash the lights. I don't look. You braver than me on now. The cemetery. I'd have been on the perimeter with the flashlight. Like, does this help? Is this the light <laughs> does help? Like, does this help? And like, did you see? Like, so it was the typical like like Hollywood haunted yeah. cemetery. Like the name across of it was in that iron. The gate was like an iron gate that creaked when you opened it. Like. They had tombs. Like yeah, if you're true. like, I what hear it in my head. Get out when you see it. Get out. And you're like, all right, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> it's one oh, of them. Oh, <laughs> horror movies. Yep. I, nope. Yeah. I know that probably makes me sound like a chicken, but I uh, know. Nope. It's rich I'll is take the it. chicken, not you. <laughs> what you want? There's a certain stuff. Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. Mm. Nope. Like, I think it says something like, I'm scared of cemeteries. I don't like being in them, but I still went down there and investigated, right? Like, well, that's yeah. something. Definitely bravery, courage. Like, and also, you know, that's the mission. So, you know. Yeah. It was like, we got to get these answers. I don't know why one of the big burly guys can't come down here, but <laughs> let's yeah. go. Yeah. I'm like, why they send them down to the cemetery? Like, but. They knew, too. They were like, yeah, they'll do it. I don't know if I'm going in there. (laughs) Oh, a tiny dark hole that looks really sketchy. Rochelle, can you climb in there and see what's going on? Right. I will say that I love, like, the little tiny dark little holes, like, going up in the attic in the first season. I loved it. Like, it was awesome. And, like, any time I went in... The actually the location that uh, Brian fell down the stairs, the plantation, there was a trap door in the floor, and I actually opened it and got down there. She she Look. she she she's stronger than me. I'm not doing that. Mm. I'm not gonna fit for one. <laughs> what was your most? What do you like? What was your most terrifying hunt like? The hunt that had the the investigation that had you the most, just like, mm, what am I really doing? Um, I will say that I think that it was the place that I've actually been scared was Madison Seminary, and that was going to be it. our next question too. Look, okay. I had I told Logan when we were I was like, listen, let's say we putting you know these little questions together and i was like listen i said i want to talk about madison seminary i was like so <laughs> so um yeah. that that was a scary and uh, yeah that location wasn't the best okay like it it's awesome i want to go back there again but i will say up in the asylum part so i sometimes get feelings pick up on other people's feelings okay um I know it sounds silly, but like sometimes when you see me cry or you see me agitated or something like that, it's not ne- or like panicky. It's not necessarily my feelings. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. I, yeah, is like emp- I, is an empath of sorts, something like that. Yeah, empathic or whatnot. Um, 
while we were up there, I was perfectly fine. I was walking around up there. And then when we went into the room that used to be like the operation room, I stepped in there and immediately had a horrible stomach ache and did not feel good. I had to get out of there. Like I was sitting in the hall. Brian was asking questions. I was not doing, I don't know what I was picking up on, but it felt like I was having back labor. Like I've had two kids. And it felt like I was having labor pains. Like I was bent over. I was sweating. It was hot there to begin with. But like I was like dripping sweat. Like a different type of you're just hot. Mm -hmm. Like it was. And like it hurt so bad that it was bringing tears to my eyes. The cameraman, I told him, I said, get the camera off of me. Like which he did. He respected me. I was like, because I'm not doing anything right now that you need a camera on me like yeah exactly I can't get it together to ask anything to even ask what's going on because I was I was in severe pain and Brian just he doesn't like that at all like he doesn't want anything to happen to me ever so he got mad and was like hey like leave her alone if you need to tell us something or need to do something do it to me instead after he said that I was feeling better like, I stopped hurting and was feeling better. But then his mood completely changed. And you could tell right off the bat. It was... tell. And we got, we asked questions, but then it got to the point where he had had enough and it wasn't going to be, it, the conversation wasn't going to benefit either side. It wasn't going to benefit us and it wasn't going to benefit the entities that were there. Like, because he was mad. And we came downstairs and it, what was so hard for me is that, I'm used to getting feelings and Brian knows how to kind of comfort me or like, or I know how to get out of it myself, like, because I get them. It was weird because the roles had reversed and Brian experienced something that he had never experienced before. And I didn't know how to comfort him because I was like, I don't know. I can try to tell you to do what I do, but like, it was definitely like an intense intense investigation and then later went up there to like after we wrapped up the investigation for the night I went up there to get the lockdown camera and I started to walk up there and I stopped and spun around I was like not today Satan not today I got like this weird feeling I was like normally I'll go grab lockdown cameras by myself I'm not scared I don't care um but I could I was like all right so I grabbed Brian to come upstairs with me to grab it and as we were grabbing it We started walking down the stairs and we heard a woman. And of course, we've already turned the lockdown camera off and everything. And we heard a woman say something and we stopped and looked at each other. And I literally, I scolded a ghost. Okay. I scolded a ghost. I said, no, you had your chance. I said, and you were not very nice to either one of us. We will be back tomorrow and we can talk then. I said, but we are not talking to you the rest of the night. And Brian kind of just looked at me. I was like, I am taking back my power up here <laughs> because she had me on the floor. Okay. <laughs> like it was not cool. And he, he we were laughing. Full on mode with a, with a ghost. <laughs> full on mom mode. Yeah. He's like, you scolded a ghost. I was like, I did scold a ghost, but she messed with my best friend and I wasn't happy with that. <laughs> she put that ghost in time out. Yeah. She's like, get in that corner for the rest of the night. We'll back, be back tomorrow. Yeah. Think about what you said. Yeah. Think about what, what you did. did. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. But yeah, I'd love to go back to Ma- Madison Seminary for sure. That is scary, one... but it was a good, a good scary if that makes sense. Oh, definitely, definitely. Fear is uh, there, there's an adrenaline with fear, especially uh-huh. when everything turns out to be okay. Yeah. Then it's even exactly. more exciting and exhilarating, and it's just like. More again, you know. So I definitely get that. Like, it's different from like I'm running from a tiger fear. Like, I don't. That's not fun. That's a different fear. Yeah. <laughs> that's I tiger over there. Exactly. I do have one last question specifically. Oh. Okay. And then we have one fan question. Then we're good to go. Okay. If someone is passionate about getting into the paranormal world and becoming an investigator, what advice would you give them? Um, so I would say if you want to be a paranormal investigator, 
I would like try to find a team to join, like a team that shares the same values as you, that you can investigate with. Um, I don't advise investigating by yourself um, just because you could fall down some stairs and then who's going to help your ass, right? Um, So find a team that you feel connected with, that you feel like you guys share the same type of investigation techniques and join that. um, And just go into every investigation with an open mind, be respectful and yeah, and try to have fun. Yeah, definitely. Like, definitely got to have fun. I mean, if you have fun, it you have a passion for it. That's how things blossom, because you enjoy what you're doing, and just look at those spirits or entities or whoever you come across. They're people. They passed away, but they're still people. So treat them that way. Exactly. And, and uh, like she said, don't investigate alone. Because if you do fall, who are you gonna laugh with? You don't have a Brian. And we actually had two fan questions, but you already answered the, the most haunted location you ever investigated, correct? Um, The scariest one. The most haunted? Oh, she's got to answer it. Man. Yeah, because I would... Yeah, because it could be a very minusculely... Uh, when it comes to paranormal activity and still be utterly just terrifying. And then there could be a place where there's just all types of activity, but nothing that was really, you know, so I think that would be a difference between most scary and the most haunted. But I'll say, I don't, I feel like it's the most haunted that I've investigated, but I'm not positive. Like on the show, it's the Colorado episodes. Um, I feel like that, and it's in season two, so it'll be coming up. And, um, I felt like every place we went, something happened. So, but it was awesome. It was almost like you could expect it to happen. Mm -hmm. Then like you, after it happened so many times, you're like, okay, I know when I go on this run within so many minutes, something's going to happen for sure. And, it's it's my favorite location, I'll say, because I felt like there was it did not disappoint at all. I can't wait for that one. I yeah. can't wait for season two even more. There's tonight, guys. Cheap plug tonight. Fort Stanton tonight. <laughs> tonight. You and them plugs. Uh, yep. Yeah. Um. Well, I've got one more. Like, so where do you see like the future of ghost hunting? Like, obviously, like you know, Grant is just man he's just great like he's an OG pioneer yeah. just like man like it's Grant Wilson know. right yeah, it's Grant <laughs> Wilson. so but like and you know and the show has been around and like I've seen so many other ones try to come and they to me they just never you know yeah like ghost hunters but like where do you see the future of ghost hunters going personally like do you see like the ups that you know like the trajectory of it do you see it continuing on for years to come or you know I mean, I hope so, right right i'll be right <laughs> I, hope, I hope so <laughs> it, it's, um, it's like sports and, and pro wrestling it, it, it's going to evolve yeah um i think that paranormal investigating will probably start do investigating a little more scientifically I know that's kind of what we're trying to do, um, implement a little bit of a scientific method and mm-hmm. use things that necessary, like our pieces of equipment that we have. When you investigate, you can use whatever you want. Mm-hmm. If it helps you, go for it. Like, but when you're investigating and you have to like give evidence to a client, we're trying to use pieces of equipment that aren't there to measure ghosts, but environmental changes. Um, oh. or, or can do scientific, like record data or be analyzed scientifically. Um, like we love the EVPs and all of that. Like that's always great. But, um, like visuals and things like that, we're trying to go a little bit more scientifically with it. 
And uh, I think that by doing that, we're starting to pick up on things of how these entities possibly manifest and what it necessarily takes. So you can almost be like, okay, well, there's a drop in pressure or there's a drop in temperature and increase in pressure. So mark that because I'm most like, like in the past, we've had an EVP when that's happened or mark that because, you know, something's about to, we're about to see something like those are things that 